Ditto, a transform Pokemon. It is able to rearrange the cells of its body and assume any form. Its only attack is transform. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan and I'm a first year PhD student at the University of Waterloo. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the stats that I had when I submitted my PhD application. Whenever you apply to a new program, it's important to check what the minimum application requirements are because you wanna make sure that your profile is competitive and that you have a good shot of getting in. For a PhD program, they're looking at a couple of key stats from their candidates, mailing their GPA and their GMAT scores. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing the GPA that I had in my undergraduate degree, my master's degree, as well as my GMAT. Let's talk about grades for my undergraduate degree. So I went to York University and I got a Bachelor of Business Administration with a specialization in accounting. And what that really means is that most of the courses that I've done uh, were accounting related. So financial accounting, managerial accounting, auditing, and tax. And these courses were compliant with the regulatory accounting body in Canada. The electives that I took were mostly from the economics department because I thought that would complement well with my business degree. One thing to note about Canada is that a lot of schools use different GPA scales. So at York University, we actually use a nine point GPA scale rather than a 4.0 or a 4.33 GPA scale, which is much more common. On the screen, you should be able to see a GPA converter across the different universities in Canada, just so we can keep things comparable. So I calculated the GPA that I had for my undergraduate degree and my weighted GPA is a 7.1. So that 7.1 GPA turns out to be a B plus. And if we convert that to a 4.0 scale, that is a 3.33. Now a B plus sounds pretty okay. However, I believe most graduate programs are looking for an A minus to A range. Now, if we dig a little deeper, we can see the distribution of the individual marks that comprise of this B plus average. Just so you guys have a better idea, I got two C's, nine B's, 12 B pluses, 13 A's, and two A pluses. Overall, I would say that the distribution of my marks is pretty decent. A lot of the marks do hover around the B plus and A range. You probably noticed that York University doesn't believe in minuses, which I find a little strange. But overall, I think that this GPA is okay. It's not really that competitive, but it's decent. One more thing I'd like to add is that it's okay if you guys have a couple C's in your undergraduate degree. I think most graduate programs understand that during your undergrad, it's a transition period for a lot of young adults, and typically their first or second year grades aren't usually the best because they're still adjusting to this new lifestyle. So don't give up hope if you had a couple of bad grades. So before I went to the University of Toronto for my master's degree, I actually had to go to Ryerson University in order to retake that first year stats course that I got a C in. This was a conditional requirement in order to be admitted into my master's program. I decided to enroll into Ryerson University because my father is a professor at Ryerson and the tuition is free and Ryerson is located in downtown Toronto so I figured it wouldn't be such a bad idea to spend the summer studying in the city. I retook that stats course, I paid attention, focused a lot, and I came out of that course with an A+. From this experience, my obvious advice to you is if you can get a good grade the first time around, go for it. So you can avoid the trouble of having to retake that course later on. Now we're gonna talk about the grades for my master's degree. So in my master's degree, I was a little bit older and a little bit wiser, and I spent a lot more time studying than fooling around. So my weighted GPA for the University of Toronto is 3.69, and on the 4.0 GPA scale, that is just touching an A minus average. If we break that down into the individual courses, you'll see that I had one B, 6 B pluses, 10 A minuses, 9 A's, and 2 A pluses. So overall, it's not that bad. Definitely could push a couple of those B pluses up to an A range, but for the most part, my GPA is hitting the minimum requirement for most PhD level programs. I would say overall, my grades aren't the greatest. They're not the worst, but they are decent enough where I can get a foot in the door when I send my applications in. Now that grades are out of the way, let's talk about the GMAT, the part of the application where I struggled the most. Many business graduate programs require you to either do a GMAT or a GRE. Within the GMAT, GMAT, there are four key components, verbal, quant, integrated reasoning, and there's an essay portion. And your score is ranked against all other individuals who have taken the GMAT. You're given a raw score out of 800, and then that score is associated with a certain percentile, which shows where you stack up against other people who have taken that test. Now for the GMAT, I've taken this exam multiple times in order to get at least a 700 score for my application. A minimum of 700 is considered a really good score. It's definitely very competitive, and that is a magic number that everyone is striving to get. In terms of my GMAT performance, I'm gonna be telling you guys the best GMAT score that I submitted for my PhD application. So 
I got a total score of 700, which is the 80th percentile. And if we break that up into verbal and quantitative, that's 37 for verbal and 48 for quant. The other two components, I got a six for analytical writing and then a three for integrated reasoning. I'm not really sure how I got such a low score for integrated reasoning. I think because that was the last section that I did on my exam, my brain was just exhausted and I couldn't think with my head anymore and my head was just clicking whatever answers I could find to get me out of that exam center. But overall, I think the score is pretty competitive. You know, I hit that 700 score and I believe this was on my fourth or fifth attempt at the exam. So I was definitely ecstatic about that. And I think with the 700 score, it definitely improved my chances of getting into a PhD program. One thing that I will say is that when it comes to the GMAT score, there are rumors that the standards between domestic students and international students are a little different. For domestic students, it is rumored that your expectations for your standardized test scores are a bit lower in comparison to international students. As a domestic student myself, I think that getting a really good score uh, definitely improved my chances of getting into the PhD program. The GMAT is definitely an intimidating and daunting task for any potential student, and I'm really looking forward to creating a video speaking about my experience struggling through and eventually conquering the GMAT. Just to give you guys some context, I've done the exam multiple times. I think I invested probably around two years of my life trying to eventually build my competency to a level where I could get this kind of score. So if you're interested in that kind of video, please let me know in the comment section below. And that kind of wraps out my key stats for my PhD application. There are definitely sections of the PhD application that I didn't go through in this video such as the statement of interest, the references, as well as my resume. But I believe that these areas of the application are a little bit more subjective and requires its own video in order to help walk you guys through the thoughts that I had when I was preparing these sections of the application, especially the statement of interest, which is really a key component of your application. But yeah, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of what it takes to get into a PhD program. If you have any questions on the application process, definitely leave them down in the comment section below and I will address them. If you enjoy university and college related content, then please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that thumbs up button because it really helps out the channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of my future YouTube videos. Even though this video was definitely informative, I try to bring some comedy into the videos as well with that introductory Pokemon clip. So if that's something you guys like, then definitely let me know and I'll definitely incorporate more of those into my next videos. Thanks a lot and see you in the next one.